Bull's Head is, is a pretty iconic jazz venue. Uh, it's been going for over 50 years um, under the uh, previous ownership. Dan Fleming used to have it. Um, it started off as a pub and he started off having occasional music, then a little bit more music. Uh, he was a big jazz fan anyway. Um, and then it ended up as a proper venue venue. Um, and it's played host to all sorts of people, great American tenor players, Coleman Hawkins, um, the great uh, Jimmy Witherspoon, uh, the blues singer, um, all sorts of um, great, obviously European and especially British uh, uh, players. I mean, Tubby Hayes, Stan Tracy, um, all of those people. And of course, um, it wasn't strictly just jazz, it was other forms. Mick Jaggers performed down here. It's Alan Price, uh, who now also uh, carries on the banner, he's still playing down here. Um, and it's a good mixture. Um, it's a sort of, I would say, jazz, Latin, blues, more or less covers the ground there. You took it over in January 2014? Yes, I, yeah, actually it was very lucky because you hear about venues closing all the, all, all, all the time now. I um, launched it in uh, uh, January with uh, the, um, probably the first lady of British jazz, Claire Martin, who of course is a regular now, um, plays with uh, Ray Gelato as well. And it's, uh, it, it's gone from strength to strength, um, albeit in a slightly different, uh, different mode. So tell me about your background, that you're able to put together such a good lineup. Well, I was, always, I was always steeped in music from an early age, whether it was jazz or blues or soul or Latin. Um, and um, I had, had my own blues band many, many years ago in uh, Copenhagen, of all places. Um, and I, I actually ended up running a jazz venue for many, many years, the uh, famous Dover Street restaurant and uh, jazz bar. Uh, the old Dover Street wine bar, but sadly uh, shut its doors now. Um, and of course, for 20, 30 years, I had thousands of musicians coming through the door. We had music six nights a week. And I think that probably is the key, that you know so many of these people and you've worked with them down the years. I don't know many of these names, to be honest with you, but when you look at their resume and you see that, you know, one bloke has been asked to play the piano for Jules Holland at his wedding and somebody else played with the Rolling Stones and uh, so on, then you, you can see that they are really, really good musicians. So how do you get such top musicians so consistently? Well, we've inherited some of them from, from the previous uh, incarnation. Um, Alan Price uh, plays here. He lives just down the road, which is handy for him. Um, Humphrey Littlefield Band still appears, sadly without Humph, who departed some time ago. Um, so th 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 there's a few outfits that, um, that sort of we've inherited, uh, great jazz, uh, great draws. And, they, and then obviously we bring in other people in as well. So it's a nice mix. And we're always trying new people out here which I think is very important for a jazz venue. The great thing that I find now, especially about the Bull's Head, the age group is totally across the board. Um, we have people sort of 17, 18, 19 coming in here, and we have people of 17 coming in here, and everybody in between. Um, and, and it's great because it's not just the local area, people come from uh, miles around as well. So all modesty aside, um, you've got Ronnie Scott's, you've got the Camden Jazz Club, you're up there with those two, aren't you? We are indeed, yes. I mean, don't forget, we've been going longer than most of them as well. Um, probably uh, longer than anybody, I would think, probably apart from maybe Ronnie Scott's or the established uh, 606. Those, 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 those are the other two that sort of come to mind with uh, the longevity of jazz in London as venues. So, tell me about the band you got on tonight. Um, they're great fun, the Mississippi Swamp Dogs. Jeff Williams, who's a fantastic trombonist, swing trombonist, his outfit. Uh, he's a fair singer as well. And, and it's, it, it, it's a sort of tribute to all the great um, um, artists of the American South. It's sort of funky New Orleans, um, boogie woogie blues. Mississippi via Salford? Uh, Mississippi via Salford, yeah, exactly, yes. But, uh, but the guys, the guys uh, play in America a lot as well, so I mean, they're all over the place. So it's a long way from Salford to the Mississippi. Tell me you about your musical journey. <laughs> well, uh, I moved down from Salford down to London when I was 19. Uh, I worked for a living uh, for a few years and got totally and utterly bored of working for a living. And I'd always been a big fan of music. I'd been going to see live gigs since about 1973 and always played for fun and uh, decided in the early 90s to pack up the real job and uh, study and, uh, and take up playing full time. But you can play a trombone properly. How did you learn that? Well, um, I started in brass bands in, in Manchester. The North of England's got quite a few uh, brass bands. There's a big tradition of brass, brass band playing. 
Uh, so I always knew how to play the instrument, but when I decided to take playing up professionally, uh, I went to see uh, the lead trombone player with the uh, LSO, the London Symphony Orchestra. And uh, he, he churns out some amazing players at the Guildhall School of Music. And I thought, well, I'm going to start, start with him. And uh, he booked me on the right track. Thank <laughs> you.